Well, good morning, folks. It's Richard Gene, the fishing machine here. Cold morning here on the Tennessee River. I believe it's about 45 degrees right now. The wind's blowing a little bit, not much. Cold, super cold. Now, I just put in at the round, and my intentions today were to find some wintertime shell cracker and bluegill. I, I got a hankering for them. I love to eat them. I believe they're the best fish that they are in this river to eat. I'd rather eat them against any fish that swims in this river. But when I put in, I always turn my depth finder on before I even launch a boat. It's just a habit, a habit of mine. So the current caught me right there. I was piddling around. I glanced at my depth finder, and what did I see? A big water fish right on the drop right here. What I'm talking about is just to drop off right here with a few rocks. And I seen on my screen a big water fish. To me, they look like bass. I believe they're spotty bass, largemouth. Could be some smallmouth in there, I don't know. But they look like bass. What I'm gonna do is take these night crawlers and throw on top of this rock pile and see if they're bass. And if they are, we're going to catch them. Why? Because this time of the year when the water temperature reaches, let's we'll see what it is now, 54 degrees on the surface. When the water temperature gets around 55, and later on it's going to get around 50, possibly 48, 49, who knows? Depends on how cold of a winter we're going to have. But this is the perfect time to start fishing for night crawlers. Four bass. And I just so happen to have a bunch of them with me. So we may, if these are bass right here, which I believe they are, we might just catch bass because I love it. And I'll show you what I'm using. It's a lot of fun, folks. Blessed day to be out here. God is great. Now that rock pile, I'm anchored right here now. The current's coming towards me. That rock pile is about right there. It starts about right there and comes on out right in here. Right on the drop. And the drop is 8 to 10 feet of water right there. It's 8 to 10 feet of water. You have the rocks and it drops on off into. And we're in 13 and a half feet of water. A little over 13 feet. Now what I have right here is going to be fun if these are bass. A sow belly rod. This is an ultralight rod, six and a half feet long. Two pound test mono. This is vicious, high vis, vicious line, monofilament. A small split shot. A half of night crawler is what I'm going to start off with. And let's look at this hook. This is a size six eagle claw light wire hook. Tied. With, with a palomar knot, no, a trilene knot, excuse me. Now I'm gonna hook that half of that night crawler like that. And I might end up using the whole doggone night crawler if these are bass. But let's make a cast out there and we're gonna test it, test and see if these are in fact bass. Two pound line, so I'm gonna have to really loosen this drag Adjust it to where I can get a hook set, but yet the line will come off that spool. Because two pound test line is like sewing thread. We're fixing to have some fun, I believe. Let's do it. Those people putting in right here, and they're not even aware of the fact that there's bass out here like crazy. Watch this, folks. There he is. Golly. This, this is the kind of thing that, 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 that's tough for me. Like I said, I love to catch bluegill and shell cracker uh, this time of the year because normally you can find them old big bullgill and them big shell cracker. But uh, I'll anchor up in a hole like this, and this, is ha this happened to me last year a couple of times, wanting to catch them. Then all of a sudden I, I'm on top of a big school of bass. And um, when the water temperature is this cold, 55 degrees and less, 
believe you me, these big bass will hit these night crawlers. They love them. They love them. They absolutely love them. But here's this fish is really giving me a fit here. I the reason is is because he's locked up in this this current. He's out here in the current, and that makes him even that much meaner. And I did bring a net with me, so that fish was around 11, 12 feet deep when he hit right on the edge of the big spotted bass. Big, pretty spotted bass, too. Look at there, what a spotted bass. <laughs> Fat, healthy. That is a chunky fish right there. I tell you what, this is one of the fattest bass I've ever seen for his length. I'm not kidding, this is a heavy, heavy fish. Heavy fish for his length. Now folks, I want you to look what a healthy fish. Look how fat that spotted bass is. That's amazing. That fish got captured in that current, and I like to never wore him out. That's how strong these fish are. Little bitty size six hook. That's all you need for this light line. But is that not a beautiful, chunky, fat little specimen right there? Beautiful fish. Let's let him go. Let's revive him. I bet that fish went through a lot. One thing about this cold water, you don't have to revive them a whole lot. That is a healthy, healthy fish. Watch him. There he goes. I wore him plumb down. Light line will wear them down. You have to fight them slow, so when you get them to the boat, they'll give out. And I always buy the Canadian night crawlers at Walmart. They're a lot cheaper than those in these Ma and Paul shops. And uh, I mean, a lot cheaper, so that's the way I buy them. And I'll usually get about five or six of them and dump them in a cooler like this and fish them up. Usually when I start night crawler fishing, I try not to waste them because they are high. And uh, I'll go fishing with them three or four times. A couple of rocks right there, folks. That'd be a great place to catch fish. Matter of fact, there he is. Golly. What in the world have we got? <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun. Oh my goodness, that fish right there, I couldn't even, I'm talking about it, felt like I was hung up, but then I felt a little, and I said, yeah, I'm hung up, hung up into a bass. That fish didn't know he was hooked, see this, this rod is so limber, and these fish, of course, these river fish are used to, to current fighting the current all the time. I mean, they're born and raised in current. And uh, when I stuck that fish, this rod is so limber, this little sow belly rod so limber, that fish didn't even know he was hooked. He didn't start fighting until I started putting a little pressure on him. Then he went to fighting. This two pound test line has so much stretch that uh, they don't feel much pressure at all. But yeah, we got him. He's barely hooked too. That's what I like to see. That's being aware of what's going on at all times because they can swallow that just like that. That's a nice spotted bass. Chunky fish. He'll quit directly. Let's just go ahead and add him before he gets his head back into the current. There we go. Look at there, what a fat, fat fish. Hey, I want y'all to look. Now, I'm gonna tell y'all, see how he's hooked right there? Barely, that's what I like. Just as soon as I feel that fish and hail it, I just go ahead and stick him. 
little old hook I hold them nothing more than just a little brim hook but I knew that was going to happen believe it or not I went to Wally World and bought me a bunch of night crawlers and I thought you know what those holes that's holding shell cracker this time of year is going to be holding some good bass and that's what's going on right now let's let him go God, these fish are so so healthy there we go fish is wore out but like I say in this cold water they recover quick now if it had been in the summertime he would have been you'd have had to work with him a little bit nothing like it uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to retie it right here. Now, I had a, a trilene knot tied in right there on that. And I used a trilene and a, a palomar, especially with this light line, this mono. So, yeah, about four or five times is good enough. Is go around four or five times and go back through both loops. A trilene knot is a very, very strong knot. Okay. Very good for mono and light line. This kind of fishing right here <coughs> is so, uh, what, are you gonna say? what am I going to say? So simple and straight to the point that anybody can catch them like this. Once you locate the fish and find them, well, it's nothing but just a lot of fun, folks. There's a lot of bass in here. A lot of bass right here. I want y'all to look right here under the boat. We got a fish. See my rod bent? Oh, my, 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 my. Oh my goodness gracious alive. What have we got here, folks? <laughs> Golly. That fish was directly up under the boat. And by the way, I'm having to back reel. My drag's not working near as smooth as it should. Not near as smooth. So I'm back reeling. It's the best technique you can use for light line, really. A lot better than any drag when it comes to a spinning reel. This is a good one right here. He's coming up. Well, he was coming up. Those light wire hooks are great hooks as long as you don't put too much pressure on the fish. And of course, with a two pound test line, you can't. You can't put a lot of pressure on. With the combination of both, it works hand in hand. With a person realizing that he's got sewing, sewing thread, uh, with a combination of a weak hook that bends out easy, it's kindly an advantage knowing that uh, when you're fighting a big fish. This fish is in the current I'm anchored. I can't do anything but let him just go on. And I got just enough pressure on him to wear him out. But I'm going to be fair with y'all. You know, when it comes to knots, they ain't but two with this light line, in my opinion. That's a Palomar and a Trilene knot. Those knots will hold up. I have landed some big fish, believe me on this two pound line by using those two knots. He's just a good solid fish. A football. Every one of these has been footballs. I actually thought this fish was bigger. Bigger than this folks. But still it's a good one. They got a they're packing on the weight right now. Look at there what a pretty fish. Yeah. Oh yeah, fat, oh my goodness, that, fit, that fish give me a fit. Look at there how fat he is. Golly. 
display. That's very impressive to me. There's the hook right there, barely hooked. It's a wonder if them teeth didn't saw him in half. It's a wonder if them teeth didn't saw him in half. That's a good fish. Let's let him go. Go on back. There he goes. There he goes. Okay. Whoa. I'm talking about whoa. Man, I, I, I'm about to holler and scream, but I can't because there's, there's some fellers right there. And they might think I'm nuts. Okay. Whoa. I, I'm going to try to hold it. I don't know if I can or not. Hey, man. Whew. Okay. Let's catch another one. Ain't this something, folks? These people coming in, they're going out like crazy. And these fish are just coming to me. There's no need for me to move. These fish, is, this is a place where these fish are just coming, parking right in here a little bit, and then moving. They just keep coming to me. This is the kind of place that fish will move to you, though. They can't help it. They'll come down this drop. And see all these rocks in here and they'll park for a while get on the down current side of those rocks before they move on and directly here comes two or three more it's just one of those spots these fish is actively moving too. another thing that's going on today they're doing a lot of moving they're really biting good and the reason why is because there's a front knocking on our back door another one there he is he's on there right now right under the boat let's see what we can do with him there he is this is something else folks this is a good one this is a real doggone good one this is a real doggone good one. Oh my okay this is either one or two things a big bass i mean a big one or it's a drum and hey hey this is a good one i'm gonna have to really take my time with this one i've seen times where night crawlers without fish live crawfish or manners i've seen that time and I believe the day is the day because the reason is is because we've had so many fronts the last couple of weeks that it sort of uh, messes with these fish a little bit. The barometric pressure is is getting sky high and then it goes down, then it's sky high again it goes down. Now, as far as the water temperature, it has fell in the last two weeks probably about 15 degrees, 12 to 15 degrees. Uh, on the surface, and that's pretty dramatic, really. We've been having a lot of warm weather, and all of a sudden we start getting cold weather, and it, that's another thing that sort of shocks fish a little bit. I mean, they'll still bite, but it, it does mess with them a little bit. Messes with their, their air bladder, if you want me to be specific. Here he comes. This is a good one. He don't look that big out there, folks, but I'm going to tell you, he is. A GoPro camera don't justify the, the size of fish, let me tell you. I mean, this ain't no trophy, but it is a good one. I mean, it kind of is a trophy. If you think about it, we're lying this light. And I'm going to tell you what, the best monofilament that I've ever found, monofilament, is this uh, high-vis vicious in, in two-pound test line. It ties a real clean knot. It don't burn. 
strong. It's got plenty of stretch, and that's what you need fighting a big, a good fish. Light line. This is a good one right here. Now that he's getting tarred, we're going to have to inch him towards us. And usually what happens when they get this tired, they'll make one more attempt hard as they can. And that's the one that usually pops people's lines on this light line. Because believe me, this knot, this knot is getting weak. <laughs> it's getting real weak. Let's get this net ready. I think I have a lot of confidence that we're going to win this battle. Look what a fish. Oh, my goodness. My, my, my. Now, if it hadn't have been in this current, oh, uh, this fish would have got caught a lot quicker than what he did. <laughs> He's caught. Golly. This is a big one. This is a big fish. He's actually heavier than what I thought he was. Uh, I don't believe that I'm going to catch a fish this this beautiful and this well proportioned for a long time the wind's giving me a fit but i want y'all to look what a beautiful spotty bass this is a good one i mean a good one. on two pound test line i like to never in this current landing barely hooked underrated hooks cheap hooks <laughs> and look at there, what a spot. It, you know, let's let it go. I don't know what to think about it. I really don't. These fish has come to me. It's like the Lord put them here for me to catch. I, I'm not kidding about that. That fish right there is all I want on two pound test line and, and in this current in an anchor position that, that's all I can handle that's about all I can handle right there and there she goes you know fishing teaches us a lot of things it wouldn't take me too long to uh, think of all the things <clears throat> that it that it does teach but one of the main things that it does teach is patience patience and um, it also teaches the grass is not necessarily greener on the other side. There was a lot of things I wanted to do today running through my mind. But when it comes straight down to it, just by anchoring in that hole, having fun, catching those good fish on that light line, I couldn't have had no much, I couldn't have had no more fun anywhere on the face of the earth than right there in that particular spot. That shows one thing, never take a day for granted. Um, be proud of each and every day. Wake up in the morning, thank the Lord for this day and do the best you can and enjoy it the best you can under all situations. No matter what principalities that you're facing, enjoy your day because God give you that day to enjoy. That's what he wants you to do. Now I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments. Everything y'all do for this channel is more than appreciated. Y'all are appreciated. Hey, whoa. Oh, gone. Hey, man. And remember, go fishing when you can, because it's good food. <laughs>